Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to another segment here on In Ohio Country Today. Joining me now is one of my good friends, Jack Hagerman. Jack is, uh, let alone an environmentalist, a certified scuba diver instructor, as as well as an uh, ex-veteran. And let me first say thank you very much for your service, Jack. Happy Veterans Day. <laughs> very much so. And uh, one of the things that we're here today is uh, something that's near and dear to Jack's heart as, as part of being an environmentalist is uh, we wanted to talk about a fish that most people uh, haven't heard about, most people wouldn't even know about, but if they saw it, they would think it was a prehistoric fish or maybe even a shark. And we're talking about the paddlefish. Jack, tell us a little bit about that unique fish that uh, was indigenous here to Ohio that uh, we're trying to bring back to uh, our in Ohio country. The paddlefish has been in this area for at least 32 million years that we know of. It's a cousin to the sturgeon. The sturgeon are depleting uh, as we speak, almost extinct in our area. Paddlefish used to be thousands of them in our river systems around here and the Shawnee Indians used them as, a, as a, not only food and also skins, but also as a military uh, a use because the, the sinew from their snout went on their Osage bows that they hunted with. You know, we're standing here along the banks of the Auglaize River here in Auglaize County, and you could think hundreds and hundreds of years ago when uh, the Native Americans that were here living along these banks, fishing for those fish, what kind of uh, excitement it was. It was maybe their kind of marlin to fish for because they're, they're pretty big. Let's talk about the size of these fish. They, they do grow in a good size. Like sturgeon can get in the 6 to 12 foot lengths. Uh, the paddlefish did the same. The sturgeon had teeth and were bottom dwellers and were meat eaters and the paddlefish was an algae eater would sane through the water to get its sustenance through the phytoplankton that was floating in the water. And the Indians literally had to push their way through the woods to get to these creeks to fish for them. Couldn't catch them with a hook. You had to either snag them or catch them with a net. And that's the only way to get a hold of them. You know, when we talk about one of my favorite sports, scuba diving, I, I learned from the best I learned from you. And one of the places that, that we went diving is the beautiful quarries throughout the state of Ohio. And uh, several of these quarries are now being stocked with paddlefish. Can you tell us about what brought them back or, or who was responsible for bringing them back and, and to start to repopulate uh, some of these waterways in Ohio? It's actually a grassroots movement that started with environmentalists and especially scuba divers. The quarries are an excellent uh, spring-fed environment for them to grow in. And we've been getting them from a fish farm down in Cincinnati called Jones Fish Farm and bringing them up. They grow about a foot a year and can grow to be 50 years old and get in a six to seven foot length. And that's an amazing thing to see underwater on those clear days. It, they never come up right in the front and say, hi, take a picture. I mean, they always sneak up from behind you. But uh, imagine the excitement the Indians had when they would catch these fish and they would sustain them through the winter time with the meat and the skins from those fish. So, Jack, one of the frightening things, though, that we want to talk about are the fact that there are a lot of fishermen, there are a lot of scuba divers that are trying to locate these fish and using their eggs for caviar. Uh, you know, what, what's the status of trying to prevent that from happening so we could continue to repopulate this beautiful fish? Now that the sturgeon are gone, which was the main source for caviar, the paddlefish are just as, uh, as needed for that in production. They're getting between three and $500 a pound for their eggs, and a, a mature fish can produce five pounds a year. And in our river systems now, they don't really have a place to lay their eggs. The rocks and the, the river rocks are gone where they used to lay the eggs. And as you can see, it's covered up with sediment right now. So living to 50 years old, we've, uh, the poachers and the environment itself has reduced their population down Ohio and Indiana. Probably 64 are left in our two states when there used to be thousands of them. So we've taken it upon ourselves in the grassroots movement to purchase some and start raising them in the quarries in the area, hoping that we can get back to the old days when uh, the rivers were running clean and you could see things in the river and Lake St. Mary's. I've actually had the opportunity to spot one in a quarry uh, here in Ohio, and uh, it made me think, are there any natural predators to this fish, or are they the big dog when it comes to the waterways? There, there are predators to this fish. Uh, they don't have teeth, and they really are... Uh, uh, the kind of fish that other fish will predation on. And uh, anything like a pike or a fish in that nature was the one that was going after the paddlefish. And they are also uh, regionally in this area and also disappearing at a, an alarming rate. 
you know, we're looking at uh, building their their uh, numbers as far as in isolated areas like these quarries. But do you ever see them making their way back in, into bigger populations along waterways such as the Oglays River? It won't be our areas, that's for sure. They're still in the wild down in Mississippi and up in Wyoming. They're native to the United States. But the river systems in the state that they're in right now, they can't make a comeback in our systems. There's just no place for them to uh, lay their eggs and repopulate. You've seen many of them, and I know that you're actively involved in, in, in repopulating them. But I want to know what your first reaction was in the fresh water when you first experienced uh, your your first paddlefish. What, what was that like? What, what kind of experience was that? Uh, I can still remember it to this day. It's a lot like running into your first manatee. <laughs> they come up out of that murky water and they come up from below and behind you and you literally hold your breath and scream underwater and luckily nobody can hear you. <laughs> but when you figure out what they are and, and then they're going to check you out for two or three seconds and realize you're in their territory, they're no threat to them, they'll take off and you won't see them again. So you got three seconds to get a picture of them. And I've been lucky over the years to get a couple of shots of them underwater, both videos and stills. And when you see them, you're usually just seeing one at a time. You're never going to see more than one or, or two at a time maybe, right? They, they do school, but occasionally you can get into a school of them. But usually they're a solitary being with their mouth open feeding through the water, and they don't really care about us. They're just trying to find that algae in the water, little snouts telling them where to find it and <laughs> open up their mouth and feed. Yeah, they do like the deep water. I know that uh, in the quarries that we've dove in, uh, you know, they're, they're never on the shallow side. They're always in the deep side. Is it because of the activity on the shallow side or because they like deeper water? No, it's the thermocline they're looking for that compresses that algae and that algae layer. And they feel that and that's what they're feeding in like a, a baleen whale does. These fish do the same thing. You know, uh, how important, let's, let's, let's finalize this, this segment by talking about how important it is to bring this fish back to Ohio and to a fresh waterways throughout the United States. Everything is a chain. Uh, I've learned through Cousteau and even before then, everything has a chain to it from the smaller animals to the bigger ones. And over my lifetime, now 60 years on the planet and in the water, we've seen those chains be broken. And this is one of those chains that's going to disappear in our lifetime. And the next generation needs to know about them. They've been here for 32 million years. And uh, we got to do something to repopulate them and keep them, keep them in the area so the next generation knows what the chain of events is. Uh, it's just a, a lesson to our demise if we keep going in this direction. We've got to clean up the water systems, and we have to uh, keep the fish healthy uh, that are native to this area. Jack, if people want more information or if they want to get actively involved, where do they go? Well, I operate out of the YMCA. It's a great place to come learn how to swim and get in the water with us. But, of course, uh, your natural resources here in Ohio is a great, a great resource for us. So we're working diligently with the people at the lake. And uh, your local farmers, they uh, have a direct effect on what's happening in this area. And getting in with the 4-H groups is a great way to get a hold of this, too. They, they do a great job of being active in this area. One of my good friends, environmentalist, activist, and uh, somebody who's actively involved in, in bringing back one of the great fish uh, here in Ohio, the paddlefish, my good friend, Jack Hagerman. Jack, thanks for joining us. Yes, sir. Nice to see you.